Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. This is weekly book book discussion. Uh, we're going to talk about compound effect by Darren Hardy, and uh, this is book number nine of the fifty-two book challenge. So uh, this is going to be a quick one. Uh, it's another good book uh, that I enjoyed reading, and. Um, let me ask you a question. I want I, I posted it on the description here. If you had the choice, if you had the choice, two choices, right? I'm going to give you a million dollars in cash right now today, or I'm going to give you one penny that doubles in value for every day for the next 31 days. What would, would you choose? Two choices, a million dollar today or a penny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, or a penny that doubles in value every day for the next 31 days. Sounds like an easy, 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 easy answer, right? You'll take the one million dollars, right? A penny versus a penny? No. <laughs> well, actually, it's kind of like a trick question. A penny in uh, that doubles in value in 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 31 days equals a mind blowing 10 million dollars what yeah somebody chose a million <laughs> no that's the trick question um the, this is a, an example of compounding and i'm going to talk a little bit about it from from the book but basically uh, a penny let me show you in this graphic here if you take a penny, uh, let me lower the music here. If you take a penny, right, and day number one, where is it? Day number one is one penny. Day number two is double the penny. So that's two pennies. Day number three, you double the two pennies, so it's four pennies. Day number four, you double the four, it's eight pennies. Day number five, you double the eight, it's 16 pennies. Day number six, 16 times two, 32 pennies, and so forth, right? 64 pennies, eight, 128, nine, 256. You double it, you keep doubling the amount, $5.12 at the 10th day. Fast forward on the 15th day, it becomes $163.84. Fast forward 20 days on the day 20, 5,000, and you can see how big it jumps. Day 25, day 29, $35 million on day 30. You double that, it becomes $10 million, 737,000. Mind blowing, right? You would not have guessed that uh, it, unless you see it, right? It's, this is a, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> and, and, the, and the point about this is that in, in life, in a lot of the things that we do, if we don't see it like this, you don't realize how much a small change consistent over time gets a big impact over a period of time. And that's the whole point of, of this book and the compound effect that uh, Darren Hardy is talking about. Uh, you've you probably heard about compounding interest, you know, in, uh, in, in financial terms, uh, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Over a period of time, a small amount that seems insignificant makes a big difference over time. Um, so that that is the the whole uh, conversation in this book. And Darren gets into a lot of good examples and a lot of he talks about how this actually impacts us in all areas of life, in our personal life, in our, in our relationships, in our business, at work, health. It, it applies everywhere. Um, and uh, I, I enjoyed uh, looking at this because, again, when you see it like this, it was like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, so uh, Darren, just a little background. Darren uh, Hardy, he's, he's a publisher of Success Magazine. He's a very successful uh, business person, entrepreneur, and, and speaker. I actually, I, I, I believe I, I, I heard him in the Mastermind in 2016 um and so I, I got this book a while ago and I, I i enjoyed reading it again so what i just gave you now was the example called the magic uh the magic uh penny magic pennies um 
<laughs> Here's a question. Does prayer have a compound effect? <laughs> I think so. Absolutely. Every little, every, every, everything uh, uh, gets affected by a compound effect. A little bit of prayer adds up to a mountain of prayer, I think. So I, I totally agree with you. Um, so small, consistent changes over, over a long period of time creates massive results. So you can apply this, for example, uh, reading an example. Let's say uh, we're, we're doing this, this reading every week. Small, you know, no, no big deal. Over a period of time, you know, if, if, if you're consistent at the end of the year, you know, you read 52 books at least, you know, or more or more or less, right? At least there's more than one book, right? So that's the whole point. Little changes. And what happens, you know, you know the, the, the concepts that, that you uh, uh, pick up from the books, if you apply them, you know, that's, that's, the, that's another topic, right? Whether you apply what you learn. But, but the point is that small changes, let's say health-wise, that you decide, oh, I'm going to start running or walking or I'm going to eat less or I'm going to start counting calories or little, little things. If you do them over and over and over, over a period of time, you're going to see the results. And that's then the challenge is that, you know, we want things to happen right away and we want to see things happen right away. And that's the challenge that not everything happens right away. Success typically doesn't happen right away. When you see somebody successful, they weren't successful right away. They have probably done a lot of things over a period of time. And that's how they become successful. Now, the thing is that you see success, and uh, but you don't see the, the time that it took in that to get to the point where you're seeing it today. Um, other examples that he talked about, like, uh, uh, actually, I, I, put, I wrote some things down here. Um, writing a gratitude journal. Uh, one, one example that you can do is uh, having a journal where you write down every day, what are you thankful for? Over a period of time, if you do that, two, three, six months down the road, you're going to be more fulfilled. You're going to feel better uh, because you're going to be more grateful. You're going to be more optimistic because you're going to be seeing these small things that you're journaling about. And you can journal about a lot of things, right? I, I've been giving that advice many multiple times from different people about journaling. Um, so tracking everything is very important because what if you don't track something, it's very hard to measure success. It's very hard to to make yourself accountable if you're not tracking it. So track everything, everything. And you want to, uh, you know, in terms of like money, for example, if you don't have like a money log, he talks about having a money log. It's very easy to spend hundreds of dollars a month and not know where your money goes. Because little by little, penny here, a dime here, a dollar here, you know, at the end of the month, it adds up. At the end of the year, it adds up. But if you're not tracking it, that's an example of a compound effect that you're not tracking it. You know, little things over a period of time uh, amount to a big thing. So this can go on the plus side and it can go on the negative side, right? It, you can be doing uh, things and it impacts you in a positive way or in a negative way. So it all depends on how uh, you, you know, what you do, right? You have certain habits that define who you are. So you want to get rid of bad habits and replace them with good habits. So you want to, uh, and this is about habits, it keeps on coming up in all the books that we've read so far, uh, uh, creating good habits. Um, the, the, you know, having uh, uh, another thing we talk about is goal setting. You want to be able to have goals, know where you want to, where you want to go, what you want to do, and then you create the habits that help you achieve those goals in order to develop a habit you have to do certain things over and over a couple of times there's a certain number of times of repetitions that you do that before something becomes a habit so if you have a goal set in mind in order for you to set yourself up for success you want to find out what are the things that you need to be doing and make a habit into that in order to help you achieve that goal because you have to look at yourself and you see what are the bad habits that i have that are not helping you. You either have good habits that are that are uh, you know attracting you to what you want, and they're bad habits that are pushing you away from what you for what you want. Let's say, for example, he gets into into examples like uh, what is like your education 
versus your entertainment ratio. How much time do you spend in personal development or education versus entertainment, right? How much time do you spend on, on entertainment? So it's okay to, you know, to be, to have entertainment, but is it helping you or is it just helping you just chill and relax and, and which is okay. But when it's out of balance and you have, you know, your ratio is, is not balanced, uh, you know, you, you get what you put into it, right? So if you have habits that maybe are pulling you away from something, let's say, for example, social media, if you have habits of going too often on social media, watching the news too much, or, you know, doing certain things that do not help you uh, obtain your goals that don't help you at all. It really just push you, pushes you back, distracts you. Uh, it's just creates more noise. That's what you have to track and try to uh, eliminate and replace that with good habits. Don't just eliminate it because when you eliminate it, you, you leave a, a void, an emptiness. So you, if you're not intentional, you're going to replace that void with something else. So you want to be intentional and replace the bad habit with something good. Okay. Um, let me see what we have here. Uh, uh, gratitude journals are repeatedly. Right? Yep. 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 Train your brain to be grateful. I don't see who I don't, uh, your name is not showing up because you, uh, you have to click on the stream yard link in the description. Otherwise I'm just going to see Facebook user. So I'm going to call you Facebook user <laughs> unless you click on that link. Uh, so I can see who you are. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Get rid of bad habits, replace good habits. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, where was I? So, yeah. So, um, the other thing is, let me see. He, he, he talks about what is your why over and over. We've heard that so many play in so many places, a lot of the books about defining your why, um, if you, he gives the example, he gives this example, a very good example. If you have, if you have, uh, uh, let me remember, let me see. How, yeah. If I were to tell you to go over a plank that and walk, walk a plank and then go across to a building that is like, I don't know, a hundred, a hundred floor, right? The empire state building, whatever, a big, a big building. And you have to go from building to building from, from walking a plank. And I tell you, can you go ahead and walk over? And I say, no way. That's, that's insane. Okay. But what if I tell you if the building, uh, that I'm telling you to go over, over the plank, is catching it's on fire and let's say your family member or well, family member is, is on the building and you have to cross the plank in order to save them would you cross absolutely well it's to, it's a totally different uh scenario right it's the same same building same plank same 100 feet but you have a different why so when your why is different you'll do different you'll do what you didn't think that you would do so it really depends on what is your why. So you have to make sure that you don't just do things uh, because it, it, without a why, without a good why, don't, you, you know, question yourself. Why am I doing this? Do I have a why? And, and, and it could be a bigger picture why. Uh, and that might get you, you know, might get you thinking more in depth. Um, so having a why is very important. When, when you are trying to develop these good habits, right? in exchange to, for, for those bad habits. Think about the why. Is it worth it? Why am I doing it? Should I be doing it? You know, don't just think about yourself. Think about other people. Sometimes uh, we may uh, feel more compelled to do something to help somebody else more than we help ourselves. That's kind of human nature. But um, <clears throat> so just think about think about your why um, and have clarity. Clarity is another thing that we talked that I talked about in the book is that you know, when we're talking about goal setting and your why, if you don't really know what you want to do, you don't really know what you want to do in life or, or just in the next year, or next couple of months, or you're confused or you're just not sure, you want to work on having clarity on what it is that you want to do. And until you get that clarity, you may not get to the, re to the real why. You might think you have a why, but you're not really clear and you're not sure on what to do next so you got to work on that clarity uh and that's not easy i mean you can spend your whole life uh you know unclear on what it is that you're meant to do in this world 
uh, and that is you know that's common. Um, <clears throat> and let me see who was this. Define your why. Walk a plank up high. No, I don't want to walk the plank. Now there's a fire in front. Yep, yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so the other thing. Okay, so clarity and detail. Okay, so like I said, identify your bad habits. Um, and then you want a clean house. Once you identify the bad habits, you want to get rid of them, eliminate them right away. Don't overthink it. Um, if you have a, a habit that is pulling the pushing, you know, pulling you down until you get rid of that habit, you know, what's going to change? Nothing is going to change if, if you don't change. Right. So you want to be clear on that, uh, which behavior is not helping you achieve your goals. You ask yourself that question. Um, <clears throat> so let me give you an example about habits and the, and the compounding effect. If you think about a plant, right? You're planting a tree. How long does a tree take to grow, right? How long? And what do you do to, to take care of the tree? A little tree, right? A little plant. You plant a seed. You water it. You know, a day passes by. I don't know. Nothing happens. A day, another day passes by. You keep on watering and you keep on watering. You know, it grows. It, it, maybe it starts growing a little bit, comes out, you know. But, you know, uh, 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 then, you know, if you think about 20 years from now, the same tree is going to be a huge tree, right? But why? Because over a period of time, the, wa the tree has been watered, right? It has, you know, everything that it needs to grow. But, it's, but it took time to get to that point. Um, and uh, this reminded me of a, of a story that I told, I said a while ago, uh, that I heard from Les Brown called the, the, the story of the bamboo tree, the Chinese bamboo tree. Uh, let me just bring it up. There's a story about the Chinese ba uh, bamboo tree from the far Orient that sa uh, says that, you know, the bamboo tree grows up to, up to uh, uh, it takes about five years for the, for the tree to actually grow out. Uh, from a seed to a plant and this person was planting a, a tree it was a bamboo tree and, and he planted it and he's watering it and day passes months passes pass by and the tree doesn't come out nothing come out so he's watering it and people start talking to this person what are you doing and the guy's oh, I'm plant I'm taking care of the bamboo tree and it's a, it's nothing right it's just a dirt and he's he just watering it a year passes by, two years passes by, three years pass, and nothing, nothing. The, the 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 plant is there is no plant. He's just it's just a seed in the ground. At the fifth year, what happens with the bamboo tree? It starts to come out. Right after five years, it starts to come out from the ground, a little plant, and then in a couple of weeks, not too long, that plant skyrockets into like about i don't know 90 foot tree up like in a couple of is in a matter of weeks and so that example i remember <clears throat> i kind of summarize it but <clears throat> after five years you know anybody would have given up on that bamboo tree but what happens is that the bamboo tree five years it was building its roots underground right underground you didn't see it above ground and it you know when the time was right it came out of the ground and then it bloomed and that happens in life in a lot of things that that you don't see the results of things that that are that you're doing for things that are, you are doing but over a period of time if you're consistent and you keep on going you're gonna see you start seeing the results and then you skyrocket but a lot of times people give up on their dreams or give up on whatever they're doing before the right time where it takes off. So whatever it is that you're doing, it could take a, a different amount of time. You never know what, how much time it takes for you than it takes for somebody else. You can't really compare the exact same thing uh, with other people. It's different, right? But the point is that uh, <clears throat> there is a there is a time where things uh, develop and then they take off. Uh, so that was just an example of bamboo tree. I kind of sidetrack here. It has nothing to do with the book. But I remembered, uh, it, it kind of reminded me of the, the planting tree example. So you want to set yourself up for success, okay? Set yourself up for success. Um, and what, th what that means is that if you want to 
achieve a certain goal. What do you need to do to set yourself up for success? Take away things that are distracting you, right? Let's say, for example, I don't know, health. Let's say you want to lose weight. Don't buy food that is not healthy for you, right? It's very simple. I, I, I say that to myself every month. <laughs> I like to buy some cookies that I shouldn't be buying. I, I say that I'm buying for the kids, but I'm really the one, the one that eats them. And at late night, I end up eating too many cookies. And, and then I say to myself, don't buy those cookies. It's that simple. Set yourself up for success. And you don't even have to think about eating the cookie, right? So instead of, you know, having a cookie there that I bought and saying to myself, I'm not going to eat cookie, don't buy the darn cookie. And that's it. That's that. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're, 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 it's, it's more difficult. So you want to do the same thing with everything else in life. You want to set yourself up by, by, by pruning things, taking things away and, and putting things in that are going to help you. Like an, another example. Oh, you want to go to the gym. Okay. You want to go to the gym, but you sign yourself up to a gym that's like 20 miles away and you have to go through traffic and you know, whatever, whatever it, you know, it's more difficult to get to that gym. That's an example of a bad setup. Set yourself up for success. Sign yourself up in a gym that's easy to access, easy to get to quick, right? So it's easier to get there, right? Setting, right? So whatever it is that you're trying to do, don't make it more difficult for yourself. Make it easier. Set yourself up for success, right? And that applies in, in, a, in a lot of areas in our lives. Um, so what else we got here? It's hard to not to buy that cookie. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That is that is that applies in so many so many things. Okay. So um, yeah. So I'm kind of wrapping up. That's that's the 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 essence of this book. It's about little things and being intentional. One last thing that he talks about that um, I wanted to mention is is he he says uh, Mr. Mr. Mo talks about Mr. Mo and he's referring to momentum. Once you once you start developing a habit, once you develop a habit, you start gaining momentum. And once you have momentum, you're good. You're golden. You just have to keep on going. Keep on it, things are easier once you have that momentum. At the beginning, it's harder to start something. But then once you get started, you get your, you get in the mojo, you get your mojo, you get, you get in your, right? You get in, in the zone, you gain momentum and now it's easier to do. It's easier to, it's smooth sailing. So you want to work towards that habit until you get that momentum going on and don't stop because it's as, as easy as it is, as it is, you know, or hard as it is to get the momentum, you're going to, it's easy to, to lose it. So you have to get, continue being consistent. Uh, and don't lose that momentum. Um, you know, the example of like the rocket boosters or, you know, the, the rockets that, uh, you know, the space shuttle, you know, to, to launch a space shuttle, it, it uses the most fuel to get off the ground and, and get into or and get uh, out of the atmosphere than the fuel that it takes once it's in the atmosphere, because it takes more energy to get it off. And then, um, you know, once it's up there, you know, it's it uses less less fuel. That was an example that they get there. Um, so yeah, so that's that's uh, that's. So I'm gonna leave it like that, uh, not to make it too long. Uh, very good book, Compound Effect. Check it out. He gives a lot of a lot of good examples, and he talks about it. It's a very short book um, that you can read it easily in a day or two, I think. Um, so. Compound effect. So next next week uh, we're gonna go over uh, another book called "Exactly What to Say: The Magic Words for Influence and Impact." Somebody recommended this book to me, and I'm not really sure about it. Uh, I'm gonna go go with what they said, and I'm gonna check it out. Uh, if you have a book that you want to recommend for the for the book club or the book challenge, let me know, and uh, we'll talk about it. Oh, before I forget, I also read. I actually did. I read two books this week. Uh, uh, this book, um, by the speaker that was, um, 
Uh, he spoke, uh, Terry, Terry Tucker, he spoke on the live, sh on the live uh, weekly show uh, two weeks ago. Good book. Uh, I read this, uh, you know, short book as well. I read this this week as well. Um, if you didn't see that episode, I highly recommend you see this. Terry Tucker, um, he's a cancer warrior. Uh, he's, he's battling cancer. He has, he's done other things in his life, but right now he's been battling cancer since 2012. And in the middle of the, of the pandemic last year, he, uh, he wrote this book, uh, he got a leg amputated. He get he has a lot of issues with uh, with the cancer, uh, and he wrote this book. It's very very uh, very good read, and it's a good episode. Check him out. Uh, you know, just he was on episode number twenty six, I think. So just take a look at him. I, I recommend you you take a look at it. It's very inspiring, uh, and uh, yeah, very inspiring. Uh, Terry Tucker, uh, sustainable excellence. Uh, I'll, I'll leave I'll leave the link. So this yeah sustainable sustainable excellence i'll put the link on the comments here all right thank you for being here i'll check you out uh in the next video take care